What is up guys? It is Brandon here from The Refined Investor where we talk about everything from business investing and passive income. Now today, we're going to be talking about something that I see a lot in my own life with my friends and family. And that is four things that people are doing in their 20s to set them up to be broke or to fail in their 30s and beyond. A lot of people really look at their 20s as a time to, you know, really experiment, kind of screw off, see what they like, you know, go travel the world, buy the fancy car, you know, live in the nice apartment uptown in the city, etc. right? People think like, oh, you know, it, I'm in my 20s, I have my whole life ahead of me. So I can, you know, kind of figure out what I like and kind of screw off right now and it's not a big deal. But that sort of thinking taken to you know, a high extent can really, really set you up for a bad you know, 30s, 40s, and even beyond. So today, that's really what I wanna talk about is the four main things, in my opinion, that people are doing in their 20s that are really screwing them over for their 30s and beyond. All right, well, without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing that people are doing in their 20s that are setting them up to be broke in their 30s is buying a house that is too expensive and too large. Now, I totally get it, right? You're in your 20s, you know, you've been renting for many, many years by now, right? And now it comes time to buy your first home. And you know, you've been used to living in you know, 700 to 1500 square feet. You're ready to move up to something bigger and better. And you know, you're ready to have that fenced in big backyard, you're ready, ready to have that uh, you know, two, three car garage. And you see the perfect house, it's on the market. It's well above what your budget is and what you want to spend and what you know you should spend, but you go ahead and purchase the home anyway. Things might not go exactly how you planned out with your job. You know, you might have uh, taken on a much larger car payment, etc. A whole host of things could have uh, could have gone on, and now you are what we call mortgage poor. And that is when you've over leveraged yourself at a certain time. Yeah, you could make it work, and you expected you know, way more income to come in in the, in the coming years, but it didn't happen. And now you're almost living paycheck to paycheck. This is one thing you do not want to catch yourself doing or get into. It is messy and selling a home is expensive. So it's best just to live within your means or really what I like to do, live below your means. I promise you there will be a time in your life when it's you're more financially ready to purchase the home of your dreams. Your first, your second home shouldn't be something that if you lost your job, you, you wouldn't have the savings to pay for. Having a mortgage that is too expensive really cripples you when it comes to saving and investing for your future. Now you're putting all that money into your mortgage. You don't have a lot of money left over to invest in your 401k or you know, your Roth IRA or real estate or the stock market. So I won't harp on this and drag it out too much more. Um, I just see a lot of people my age that are getting ready to buy their first home doing this and you do not want to be mortgage poor. Just set yourself up for success, live below your means, buy the house you can afford. All right, the second thing that people are doing in their 20s that are setting them up for failure to be broke in their 30s and beyond is over leveraging themselves with personal loans and credit cards. Now this is something that you see a lot. You know, maybe your friends, you see it with your friends or you even see it with your family, right? People are living in the world of instant gratification. They want the newest phone, they want the newest uh, computer, they want, you know, the, the, the newest car, right? But what people fail to realize is if you don't have the cash to buy it right now in, in cash, right? You're gonna have to use a credit card. You're gonna have to use a personal loan. And most of the time, these things come with very, very high interest. So instead of paying $1,200 for that brand new iPhone, you're now going to be paying 2,000 for it. Instead of paying 18,000 for that used car, 
you're now going to extend the loan to 72 months and you're now paying 26,000 for the car. I think you're, follow, you're following what I'm saying. It's not a good trap to get into. Don't get me wrong, there are times where you know you might need to take out a personal loan for something because you know something came up and you really need to buy that thing right now. But I'm talking about where most people are going out to get the newest thing that they don't truly need. But again, we live in a world of instant gratification, so people don't want to wait until they can afford it in cash. Credit card debt is really one of those debts that you do not want to have. It is not your friend in any way, shape, or form. I've seen you know, anywhere from 17 to even about 27% some people are paying in credit card interest. And that just makes things way more expensive than they need to be. So please do not get yourself into trouble with credit cards or personal loans for frivolous things. All right, the third thing people are doing in their 20s to really screw them in their 30s and beyond is not taking the time to invest in themselves. And when I mean invest in themselves, I mean creating a side hustle, um, learning how to do things more efficiently at your current job, learning new things in your career to then be able to set you up to increase your income or create a completely different source of income in the future. With the internet and everything that people have at their fingertips nowadays, it is there's really no excuse to not, you know, be bettering yourself, not be learning more efficient ways to do your current job right now or not learning new things, right? To create different sources of income. If you want to learn Amazon FBA, there's a course for that. If you want to learn, uh, you know, drop shipping, there's a course for that. If you want to learn how to do your current nine to five job better, there's a course for that, which of course will lead to more income in the future, right? You're doing your job better. You're doing it more efficient. Uh, you know, you can get that promotion and with that, comes more money in the form of a raise. So many people that I know when the clock strikes five, they are done, right? They want to veg out. They want to be on TikTok. They want to be on Instagram. They want to be on Facebook. They want to be on YouTube. They want to be on Netflix, etc. right? Uh, but what that does is really robs them from investing in themselves and investing in their futures and careers. Because again, they're taking so much time to look at other people's lives, to watch you know, movies, fiction or nonfiction, and it's just a really big time killer. You'd really be surprised how much more time you'd have in a day if you cut out your social media and TV and movie watching out by like, you know, 60, 70, 70%. I'm not saying don't do any of that, but if you cut your time out that you've been doing that, you know, 60, 70%, you open up so many more hours a day, so many more hours a week, so many more hours a month, etc. It just compounds over time. So please don't fall for the excuse that most people say to themselves, oh, I don't have enough time to do this. I'm just so busy throughout the day. Please do not fall victim to that because everyone, it seems like everyone says that, that they don't have enough time. But if you really want to, people can create time. All right, and the third thing that people are doing in their 20s that are really, really hindering their 30s and beyond is not investing and saving enough. Now, when I talk about investing and saving, I'm talking about not putting enough money away for a rainy day in a high yield savings account, not investing in their 401k or Roth IRA, not investing in the stock market in a personal account, not investing in real estate, gold, etc. The reason why this is such a bad thing in your 20s is because of a thing called compound interest. After this video, I really encourage everyone to go on YouTube and look up compound interest. What you're, what you're gonna really see is the sooner you start saving and investing, the more that can compound itself over time, leading all the way up to retirement to where you can be making a ton of money that you didn't think that you'd even be able to make. You didn't, you wouldn't even think it's possible, but compounding interest, trust me, is your best 
friend. But if you're not taking advantage of it in your 20s, you're not leading yourself up to, you know, just live your best life in your 30s, 40s, and beyond. A lot of people that I know personally, you know, don't really know a lot about investing. And that's completely okay. But again, we live in the age of the internet. We can go and you know look at forums. We can go take courses. We can learn from people who are doing what we want to do. So simply saying like, oh, you know, I don't know how to uh, invest in the stock market. I don't know how to invest in real estate. I don't know how to you know invest money to start a business. There's really you, you can't say that anymore because there's so much information available at your fingertips. All right, guys, well, I really hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did like this content and wanna see more, please give this video a thumbs up. It greatly helps out my channel and the algorithm. And of course, if you wanna see content like this in the future and be alerted, please subscribe to my channel and of course hit the notification button so you will not miss a future video. All right guys, well thanks for getting this far into the video. I greatly appreciate it and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.